Hello, we are Sorted Food. So recently I came across a few ingredients that I'd never cooked with before and in some cases never even heard of before and they blew my mind. So today we're going to feed them to two of our normals in fantastic dishes to see if they're as relevant to their cooking. Now, Ebbers, I can't talk on behalf of the basic bacon here, um, but these taste buds are tough to impress. Lift the cloche. Oh. They look like rotten leaves. It doesn't look appetising, ever. No. <laughs> they are all edible. You wouldn't typically eat it in this form, but it's not going to harm you. It smells woody. Yep. Not very strong. What are you getting? It tastes like I've just picked up a used cigarette off the floor. <laughs> it's not quite as smoky. I'll be honest, Ebers, I'm not getting a food taste from it. Any guesses where in the world it might be from? I think it's either, and I'm going to go big here, mm -hmm. the continent of Asia. It's a big place. That's big, yeah. yeah. Big place. Or the continent of South America. I'll go bigger. Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> 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 to be fair, it would be remarkable if you guessed it, because the whole point of these is they're new to us. This is black stone flour. It is a species of lichen that's used as a spice, and although not hugely mm. fragrant or tasteful on its own, in its raw state, once it is cooked and heated, often in ghee or in oil, then you start to get those earthy, smoky notes. Is it likely that we've previously eaten it in a curry but just not known? Almost certainly. Ah. A wonderfully authentic ingredient in certain curries and spice blends, and we have one for you to eat now. Oh. Uh. Wow. So it's used as a spice, within a lot of other spices, and it's gonna add that something special, that something authentic, that something that you won't be able to necessarily pinpoint, but you know, ah, this is why it always tastes so good in a restaurant. The paste is sensational. Earthy, I think coconutty, really, really spiced, but with no spiciness to it, no heat from the spice. This is Indian. So you're right with India but this is from kind of the south of the continent, so Tamil Nadu and Chetanand chicken curry. It is fabulous. So it's basically like a cross between an algae and a mushroom and a fungi, and it grows everywhere, on trees, on mosses, on roof tiles, even on soil and on black stones, hence black stone flower. And when it kind of grows, possibly on your own patio, it kind of looks like a black stone flower. Can you buy it ground? I mean, it's not something I've ever seen in a supermarket, for instance, mm. in the UK. So all of these ingredients today, we've been able to easily get hold of online with like next day delivery, and they're all sort of under a fiver for each ingredient. But it's a bit like mushrooms. There are thousands, tens of thousands of different species of lichen, and lichen in general covers somewhere in the region of six to eight percent of the surface of the world, which is crazy. And yet up until a few weeks ago, I had never considered using it in cooking. If I was to try and replicate this at home, there's no way I'd ever think that that was an ingredient within it. But I can imagine you finished it and go, it's just missing something, but no noticeable flavour. Mm. Just a, a roundness, a tone, a, a deepness, a something. For me, it's like when you go to an amazing restaurant and you taste it and you just can't quite put your finger on what they do differently. It's usually those hidden ingredients you haven't heard of. If I could add that in and know it would make a massive difference to the dish, that seems like an easy win mm -hmm. to me. All right then, question for you. Can you see it rocking your crock pot or would you rather pick at something more familiar? Because you have to oh, pick actually. it off a rock. Oh, That's right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. It's it. better when you have to explain it. Yeah. I, I know it's going to upset you, Ebers, but in my everyday life, I'd rather pick at something more familiar. I think I'd let that rock my crock pot, Ebers. Bring on the next one! Ingredient number two. Looks like some hardcore prawn action, Ebers. What's happened to them to get them to that state? These aren't so nice to eat on their own, I'm going to be honest, but that smell will probably do it for you. Whoa! That, that is deconstructed shrimp paste. <laughs> These are smoked, smoked, dried, salted shrimp. Where in the world do you think they might be a common ingredient? I'm going to narrow it down this time. Oh, are yeah. you? Southeast Asia. We've certainly had shrimp paste in many dishes from there. Yep. I'm going to mix it up and say something like the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> These are African, in particular from Gambia. Oh, Ooh. 
Would you like to try it in situ? Of course. Yeah, I'm, of course, yeah, I'm excited yeah. to. Well, that's a dish. So this is the Cameroonian stew, fish stew. We've used a more local fish to us, so bream, and it's based around a kind of peanut base. Ooh. It looks amazing. Um, so what's happened to the prawns within it? So before we got them, they've been smoked, dried and salted to preserve them. And then what you can do is grind them down and use them as a powder in things, in a lot of soups and stews, or you can just cook them in and then liquidise them. So you actually put all of that through the basis of it. And you, what you get is a wonderful kind of smoky, instant fish flavour that is popular in a lot of Nigerian soups and stews, for example. But in this particular dish from Cameroon, it's used in kind of a peanut stew basis. I mean this in the best possible way. That is like the most fishy fish stew I've ever had, but in, in a good way. What do you think, Baz? <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, this doesn't overpower the flavours in the dish. Like, for me, it is a delicious stew. I think it's a, it's a touch too fishy for me, though. It's a lot more pungent than normal shrimp paste, and if that's your thing, then that is spectacular. The question is, is this the new umami to your armoury, or are you just not going to shell out for it? Oh, oh. oh okay, nice. <laughs> I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but I'm not going to show out for this one, because I don't see me using it at home. I would prefer if that was already the powder. I would probably use it a lot more. If it's in a bag and they're whole prawns like that and I have to blitz them up every time, I probably won't do that. I think the concept of this ingredient isn't new to us. We've had dried, fermented, smoked foods before, but genuinely I'm fascinated by African and South African mm. cuisine because I feel like it's something we've barely touched on. Our Meal Packs app helps you become an all-cooking, food-waste-fighting, cost-hacking, friend-impressing, always-learning, legendary home cook. It also gets dinner on the table. Can't wait for your reaction to this one. Number three. Rice noodles? Oh, why are they oh, all tied up? Sailor's knot. It is. Or a crab. <laughs> or a little hair tie. <laughs> a little bow. Uh, you can eat it in that form. It has been rinsed from its packet and is ready to consume. We then obviously, as before, have it in situ in a minute. No flavour at all. These are mm. not yam noodles. They also go by the name of Shirataki Konyaku noodle nests. <laughs> are they from... Japan. They are a noodle that are often found in Japanese dishes or across China or used in a lot of Southeast Asian countries that use them quite commonly in broths because they will continue to absorb a lot of that flavour. We have a Chinese hot pot for you and it is full of all sorts of deliciousness from fungi to our not yam noodles. We've got some Chinese sausage that's been wind dried. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Wind dried sausage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens if you have a shower outside and you don't have a towel, isn't it? <laughs> Why is that funny? It's just you sold as a wind dried sausage. <laughs> I knew I knew it was funny. <laughs> What's fascinating about these particular noodles is you might also have heard them called zero calorie noodles. What's really interesting about the noodles is that they are only about 3% insoluble fibre that comes from a root of a plant, the konjac plant. The rest is just water because that particular fibre literally absorbs like 50 times its weight in water. And then these are processed and set so that you get that kind of gelatin, almost like a spherification we've done before. But essentially what you're eating is water noodles and a tiny bit of fibre that holds it all together that your body doesn't digest. It gets right the way down to your colon before your gut bacteria go, this is great for me as a prebiotic, and therefore it's actually healthy in that sense. It looks after your gut microbe. The, the knots hold ah. the spice. I've, I've really enjoyed the, the texture and the pop of those noodles, especially once they're knotted up. So, <laughs> final question. Do you want my nudes or shall I keep them in my pant? Three. I can't believe it, but I think for the first time today, I'm gonna have to say I want Ben's nudes. 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 It's very important how you nudes. pronounce that. Nudes, as in noodles. Also, the way you said oh. that, 
was that that was the first time today. First time, not, yeah. not the first time. Yeah, it's quite early. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're a vehicle for flavour. I like the convenience of them being in a knot. Hashtag Ebers send nudes. <laughs> Let's get can, it trending. You can keep those ones. It's double O. Just to check, it's double O. Really important. It's not double O. <laughs>